Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today at AFA for our special edition Care Connection webinar series to, uh, to celebrate Fall Prevention Awareness Day and learn a little bit more about what we can do to assist our individuals who are um, older in having a, a safe and quality life. Uh, I want to, again, thank you all for being here today. This is Molly. I'm the Director of Education and Social Services for the Alzheimer's Foundation of America. Today we have a very special guest speaker, Kathy Cameron. She is, uh, has over 25 experiences, uh, years experience in the healthcare field as a pharmacist, researcher, and program director, focusing on falls prevention, geriatric pharma psycho, pharma therapy, sorry, mental health and long-term services and support. Ms. Cameron is currently a uh, senior director at the National Council on Aging, where she oversees the administration on aging-funded National Falls Prevention Resource Center and the National Chronic Disease Self-Management Education Resource Center. So before she goes ahead and gets started, I just want to orient you guys to what you've got available today. The right-hand side portal is where you'll be able to see the handouts, including the slide deck. It's all in a PDF form. Also, you are all in listen-only mode, but we look forward to the question and answer portion of today. During this time, the question and answer time, we will go ahead and you can type in your questions either through the chat feature or the question feature. And I, at the end of the presentation, I'll go ahead and uh, facilitate that for you. So with no further ado, I would love to welcome Kathy in joining us today. Thank you so much, Kathy. Uh, take it away. Oh, thank you so much, Molly. I want to thank you and your colleagues from the Alzheimer's Foundation of America for this opportunity to connect with care partners and to talk with you all about preventing falls among older adults. And you know, the timing of this webinar is really perfect because, as you've mentioned, today is the National Falls Prevention Awareness Day. We are celebrating the 10th observation of Falls Prevention Awareness Day today, which is the first day of fall. It's an easy way to remember Falls Prevention Awareness Day. And we actually have a U.S. Senate resolution declaring today as Falls Prevention Awareness Day. And NCOA has been very much involved um, in a leadership role through our National Falls Free Initiative, and we support activities that go on in different parts of the country. So I'll talk more about that later during my presentation. Okay, here we go. All right, so let's get started. Um, the, the title of my presentation is Take Action, You Have the Power to Prevent a Fall. And for my presentation today, you includes older adults themselves, as well as care partners who play such an important role in the lives of older adults, particularly those with um, any type of cognitive impairment. And I'm going to be talking about specific strategies that all of you can use, simple things that you can use to prevent falls. So for those of you who might be unfamiliar with the National Council on Aging, where I am based, um, NCOA is one of the oldest national organizations devoted to improving the lives of older adults. And we help to develop simple solutions to help older, older adults navigate through the journey of aging. And we focus on innovations, and we have developed a number of programs over the years, um, including programs you're probably familiar with, like Meals on Wheels or the Foster Grandparents Program or the Benefits Checkup. And we also have the National Institute for Senior Centers, where we provide lots of support to senior centers across the country. And we do our work in partnership with other nonprofit organizations, government agencies, and we support community-based organizations, um, health care and social service providers, and others who touch the lives of older adults. And our primary focus areas are health, economic security, and public policy and advocacy. And over 12 years ago, um, NCOA recognized that falls were a significant public health problem, and we decided to take a leadership role in this space and begin work in this area. Um, and that has included um, helping to facilitate the establishment of fall prevention coalitions across the country, um, advocating for federal, state, and local support 
for falls prevention strategies, interventions that we know work. We also developed a national action plan in 2005, and that action plan was updated in 2015, and that really serves as a framework for the activities um, that we're involved with, as well as many other organizations have adopted strategies that are part of that plan. Um, we are currently funded to do our falls prevention awareness um, work through the U.S. Administration for Community Living. We direct, as Molly mentioned, the National Falls Prevention Resource Center. And the overall goal of the Resource Center is to reduce the incidence of falls among older adults as well as adults with disabilities. And we do this through strategies that focus on increasing public awareness about falls prevention, such as our Falls Prevention Awareness Day. We serve as a clearinghouse for tools and resources, and we also devote a lot of our time to scaling evidence-based programs and strategies. So these are programs and strategies that we know work, and we want to get um, lots of organizations um, implementing these programs so that older adults can take advantage of them. So I invite you to visit our National Falls Prevention Resource Center website, and the URL for, um, for this resource center is listed here on the slide. So today, um, I thought it would be important to start with an actual definition of what a fall is. Um, and I, I will go into that in just a moment. Um, we're also going to talk about risk factors for falling, including factors um, for people with cognitive impairment. Um, we're going to talk about fear of falling, which is a common uh, problem among um, older adults, as well as care partners. And we're going to talk about action steps to reduce falls, as well as special considerations for those with cognitive impairment. So what is a fall? I want to make sure we're all clear on what we're talking about during this presentation. It's really landing on the ground or some lower surface that you didn't intend to be on. Um, and that can include things like, um, you know, when you slip, when you trip on, uh, say, a hazard in the home. So it's really, it's an it's a sudden, unintentional change in position, um, causing someone to land on a lower level. Okay, um, inc not included in this definition is a fall due to some type of overwhelming external force, such as being pushed or shoved. I just want to make that that distinction. And these are our questions that we ask, you know, when we work with older adults. Um, you know, these are simple questions that you can help identify if someone is at risk um, for a fall. First of all, have you had a fall in the past? We know that people who have had a fall in the past, they're more likely to fall again. Um, have they had an injury associated with that fall? Do they worry about falling? If they worry about falling, that can restrict their activities that can cause you know, such things as a decline in balance, muscle weakness, that can put them at even higher risk for falls. And do they feel unsteady when standing or walking? So as we go through the risk factors that I'm about to talk about, um, you know, think about what might have been the cause of any recent falls that you or your loved one has had. So just a little bit of background um, on falls, and I'm sure you probably all know a person, an older person who has fallen, and of course people of all ages fall, but we're primarily in concerned about older adults who fall because the consequences can be much more significant because of other problems that an older adult might be experiencing, other chronic conditions, for example, such as heart disease, respiratory disease, um, as well as Alzheimer's disease and, and other conditions that could be exacerbated um, as a result of the fall. It's often um, fall, a fall could represent kind of a downward spiral for many older adults. So a few facts for you about falls. Uh, about one in four older adults will fall each year. And those who do fall, about 20% of them will experience some type of serious injury, such as a hip fracture, other broken bones, such as a leg or a femur bone, a wrist, uh, wrist bone breaks are very common breaks uh, for older adults as we tend to break our fall with our hands, um, but also falls are the leading cause of brain injury. 
among older adults. And falls themselves are the leading cause of death due to an injury uh, for older adults, even more so than you know something like a, a motor vehicle accident. Um, for for uh, older adults with cognitive impairment, we know that they are four to five times more likely to fall. And I'll talk a little bit about that, the reasons why, in just a moment. And multiple falls are more than double among older adults with cognitive impairment. And people with mild cognitive impairment, that's actually a strong indicator of future falls. So this is a population that we really want to pay particular attention to and try to prevent as many falls as possible. We also know that call, uh, falls are very costly. The U.S. spends about $31 billion, that's a billion with a B, in Medicare costs um, every year. That includes things like uh, emergency department visits, hospitalizations, rehabilitation, home care, physical therapy, and so on. And we certainly know the human costs associated with falls are tremendous to the older adult themselves as well as their, their care partners and their families. And falls have a huge impact on the lives of older adults, and I'll talk about that throughout my presentation. So there's been some research looking at the consequences of falls for older adults that, who have cognitive impairment. Um, as I've mentioned before, we know that the consequences are more significant. So there are longer hospital stays associated with falls, um, greater risk of sustaining a fracture. Oftentimes, people with cognitive impairment, that fear of falling becomes um, even more apparent which leads to a restriction in activity, which can increase the risk of even more falls. Um, we also know that there's an increased burden on the care partner, um, that there are more care needs after someone has experienced a fall, particularly if there has been an event like a, a hip fracture or other broken bone or a brain injury. And also, older adults who have cognitive impairment who have a fall are less likely to return to the function where they were prior to the fall. So the good news is that, yes, falls are preventable. We know we can't prevent all falls, but they are largely preventable. And they are preventable because we know what the risk factors are for falls. We know those things that um, increase the, the chances that someone's going to experience a fall. So again, the good news is that, yes, we can prevent falls. And there are some strategies that we'll be talking about um, during this presentation. So let's start, first of all, with talking about what those risk factors are. Um, there are three main types of risk factors. Um, most falls experienced by older adults actually result from multiple risk factors. It's typically not just one risk factor that um, increases someone's chance of experiencing a fall. And we all have different types of risk factors. We have our own set. And the greater the number of these risk factors we have, the greater the chance of falling. So the first type are physical risk factors. Those are changes in the body that increase the risk for a fall. Um, for instance, for someone who has been inactive for a long period of time, um, the, the muscles in the legs and the lower body can become weaker. Their balance can decline, and that puts them at higher risk. There are also behavioral risk factors um, or things that we do um, or don't do that increase our falls risk. And this could be you know, taking greater risk, like climbing a ladder, um, to remove, um, say, a, a light bulb that's burnt out in our home, uh, for example, and, and falling um, as we were getting up to remove that light bulb. There are also lots of environmental risk factors or hazards in our home and in our community. So, for example, a toilet that is too low or a tub without grab bars are, are good examples or inadequate lighting in the bedroom, um, which doesn't allow someone to to see clearly on their way to the bathroom. So um, going a little bit more in detail about these risk factors, um, there are risk factors that we can change. And then there are risk factors that we can't change. Of course, we want to focus on those things we can change. 
um, we know that people over the age of 85 have higher risk for falls. Um, older women have higher risk for falls. A lot of that is related to muscle mass and muscle strength that, that declines to a greater degree among um, older, older women. Also, also certain ethnic backgrounds. Research has shown that um, Native Americans have higher rates of falls, for example, as well as injuries. So the things we can change, um, so increasing physical activity, making changes to the home environment that make our home safer, getting our vision checked on a regular basis is very important. Um, one of our recommend, recommendations in our six steps to prevent a fall is to have a yearly vision exam. Um, get your vision checked, get new um, eyewear if that is needed, but also there are um, vision conditions like macular degeneration and glaucoma that of course impact our vision. We want to get those diagnosed as early as possible. So having that, that yearly exam is very important. There are also several medications, including many medications that are commonly prescribed to older adults, even some over-the-counter medications that can um, create side effects like drowsiness and dizziness and confusion that can lead to a fall. I've already talked a little bit about fear of falling, and we'll touch on that again. Um, social isolation, which often goes with depression, is a risk factor for falls. So anything we can do to engage older adults in activities is very important. Muscle weakness I've talked about, and that's tied to physical inactivity. And also the, the use of assistive devices. For older adults who use canes and walkers, for example, it's important for them to understand how to properly use them. So make sure older adults who you work with have been, first of all, properly fitted for these devices and that they understand how to use them and how to store them or, or place them in a certain place so they don't become a trip hazard. So to go into a little bit more depth about falls risk factors for older adults with cognitive impairment, um, this is some information obtained from a couple of studies that look specifically at falls among this population. And these are the risk factors that are more prominent among this population. So changes in executive functioning and decision making, um, we know that that poses a risk. I've talked about the, uh, changes to the sensory system. So changes in vision and hearing, for example, that go along oftentimes with cognitive impairment reduce communication, changes in coordination, so um, losing um, flexibility and balance and, um, and muscle strength, and you know, being able to navigate in the environment poses a risk, and that's something that, that uh, these changes in coordination happen with, um, with cognitive impairment. Reduced ability uh, to retain information of course, would be tied to falls risk. And reduced initiation of tasks, which has been tied to remote, uh, reduced mobility. So that kind of gives you a sense of why this particular population is, is at high risk. And there's also been research, research that's shown a connection between mobility and cognition. So older adults with reduced cognitive function are more likely to have impaired mobility. Um, such as slower walking, poorer balance. Um, and this reduced executive function, attention, and reaction time also contribute to um, increased falls risk. So fear of falling is an area of great concern. Um, and there have actually been some programs that have been developed to address fear of falling and, and help people become more in control of their fear and help them develop strategies so that um, they can reduce that fear. Um, but it's defined as a lasting concern about falling that may cause a person to actually stop doing their regular activities. Um, they may stay at home much more than, than they would otherwise. Um, and that can restrict their activities, which impacts their muscle strength, their balance, and all the things that I've been talking about. And that 
then leads to the social social isolation, depression, and and so on that also increases the risk of falling. So we want to identify people who have that fear of falling and and intervene and prevent them um, from from further decline. So I think I've I've covered these these items in in my presentation. Um, but I want to talk a little bit now about, um, about caregivers or care partners in falls and a little bit about some of the research that's been done in this area. Um, one study has found a significant association between caregiver burden and falls. I've mentioned this before that those um, who are caring for older adults who have fallen have a much higher level when compared to those um, caring for adults who have not fallen. We know that that burden is even higher with those with, with cognitive impairment. Um, we've also seen that um, some caregivers, they develop a fear of falling. And that actually can restrict the activity of the family member who has experienced the fall. So we want to make sure we educate um, the care partners, too, about strategies to reduce falls. Um, and some of the research has shown that um, a lot of informal um, care partners um, don't know about falls prevention strategies. So I'm hoping this webinar will help educate more and more care partners about what they can do to prevent falls, reduce their own fear of falling, and the fear of falling among those who they care for. So I. I'm not going to show this video, but I wanted to um, present it um, just as a resource for all of you. It's a very um, short video, but it provides some simple strategies, these six steps to prevent a fall, that I'm going to go into a little bit more detail in my presentation about. But I um, encourage you to take a look at, at the video and share it with those who you feel could benefit from the information um, in the video. And if you are um, a healthcare professional or social service professional on this webinar, um, feel free to use this video in any presentations you're giving on, on falls prevention or if you want to have it going um, during, um, you know, maybe if you're a senior center provider or some other provider that, you know, this is something you can show to the seniors in your setting. So what can you do to prevent falls? Um, this resource that's listed on this page um, is, was developed by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And this is part of what's known as the STEADY toolkit. Uh, it, STEADY stands for, and it's S-T-E-A-D-I, Stopping Elderly Accidents, Deaths, and Injuries. And it's a toolkit for professionals, older adults, and care partners. And it's got a lot of great information on, on preventing falls. And it's one of the resources that we help to disseminate in conjunction with the CDC. So this is a, a brochure that I know they have available on their website, but they also did a large printing of these materials that are available um, at no cost. And you can order them from the CDC. So some of the simple things in here um, that are also part of our, our six steps to prevent a fall is um, engage in regular physical activity or exercise to improve balance and strength. Have your doctor or pharmacist review the medications. As I talked about earlier, we know that there are many medications that cause side effects like dizziness and drowsiness that can lead to a fall. Get your vision checked, as I've talked about, and make your home safer. Um, remove obstacles that can uh, be false hazards in the home. Remove clutter. Improve lighting. Install grab bars where, where needed to make the home safer. safer. So some of the exercise recommendations. Um, first of all, it's important to you know, talk with a doctor about starting an exercise program. We, you want to find one that's, that's right for you. Um, begin with um, a physical therapist. Um, or a falls prevention class. The picture in this slide is of a class called A Matter of Balance. I'm going to talk more about this, 
this program that's offered in communities across the country. It's a wonderful program that addresses that fear of falling and included in this program are exercises or that, can be, that are done during the workshops but also can be done at home. And make sure you find a program that's appropriate to your ability as well as your age. And probably the most important thing with any exercise routine is you've got to stick with it in order for um, the benefit to be realized. I've talked previously about the importance of home safety, and this is a really excellent tool that you can also get from the CDC. It's part of that steady toolkit that I talked about. And it goes from room to room and provides um, samples of false hazards in the home that you can kind of think about um, in ways that you can make your home safer. Um, I also recommend uh, for some of you who are just starting out on this journey and you really want to make sure that your loved one or you yourself, you, you want to age in place. An occupational therapist is a wonderful healthcare professional who you can work with. And an occupational therapist can come into the home and can, through a series of questions, um, understand the day-to-day -day function of an individual and make sure that the home environment is appropriate for that day-to-day -day function. But they can also come into the home and identify uh, things that might be unsafe. And they can make recommendations for, for home modifications, for example, such as installing grab bars around the toilet and the bathroom or making, maybe making changes to the stairway to make them safer making sure you have handrails on each side of the stairway, or if it's hard to, to visualize one step to another as you go down the stairs. One simple recommendation is to put colored tape on the edge of each stair so you can distinguish one step from another. So again, those are all kind of simple strategies that you can, you can do. And, and here are some more um, adequate lighting, keeping pathways clear, enhancing accessibility, um, and other things as well. So again, that brochure that's provided on the previous slide has some, some great information. Um, I've talked about medication side effects. Again, can lead to, to falls. And sometimes it's a simple change in a medication that can reduce the risk. Maybe a medication can be eliminated completely, or the dose can be reduced and you can still benefit from the medication or there might be a safer alternative that can be prescribed instead of the one that is causing these side effects. There are also certain medications that interact with one another and they can increase the risk for falling. But again, it's important for, for everyone to have their medications checked at least on an annual basis um, so that the, the pharmacist or doctor can identify potential problems. And I've talked about um, vision and falls risk. So again, getting that annual eye exam is very important. And you know, removing cataracts, if there are, if that is an issue, or you know, getting an early diagnosis of an eye disease. Another major area of concern is blood pressure and falls risk. It's very important um, to have regular blood pressure checks. Um, and one reason is that there are certain blood pressure medications that could make an older person um, a dizzy or lightheaded um, upon standing. Um, not only blood pr pressure medications, but other certain classes of medications can, can cause this to happen. So I recommend that older adults get what's known as a, a, a postural um, hypotension check. And that is to get a blood pressure not only sitting down, but also upon standing. And if there's a significant drop in blood pressure, that's going to be a problem that should be addressed. And it could be because of a medication that a person is on, or it could be um, a, a, a biological condition that the person has that's lowering their blood pressure that can be treated. So again, that needs to be addressed um, for older adults. And then there are a number of chronic conditions that contribute to increased risk for falls. We've certainly talked about cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's disease as a condition that increases the risk, but there are many other conditions like diabetes, arthritis, 
chronic pain, depression that have been shown to have higher rates of falls among populations with these conditions. So we want to make sure that that older adults with these conditions, that these conditions are properly managed and are being checked on on a regular basis. So again, we can kind of think of these risk factors as I've been talking about as almost um, a tower of, of blocks. And the more, the more of these risk factors you have, the more likely um, one is to fall. So these are, these are other things that, that you want to be concerned about, lack of sleep, pain, reduced activity level, and move to a new home. Um, transitions of care is also a time of great concern, whether it's to a new home or assisted living or to a nursing home. That's where we see an increased rate of falls among older adults. So taking action, um, I've mentioned a few of these already, making sure that medications are reviewed for potential side effects that may cause someone to fall, um, making sure that chronic conditions are managed uh, monitored and managed appropriately, um, getting a referral from your doctor for an occupational therapist to do that home assessment and make recommendations to make the home safer, and working with a physical therapist to help with improving physical activity that specifically address the, the main areas that pose a risk for falls, and that is balance, strength, and moving safely among the environment. So. Another bit of important information that I want to share with you, too, is we often get the question, well, what do we do after a fall has actually happened? Well, first of all, you want to check to make sure, um, you want to check for injury. And if there is an injury, you know, you call 911. Um, if there isn't an injury, you want to get up from that fall slowly. And on the next slide, we have some information on how to safely get up from a fall. Um, one thing I want to mention in particular, if you have uh, or if your loved one has hit their head as a result of the fall, you want to call um, help right away. Um, you want to go, go to the doctor or the emergency room. Um, even though they may not feel any pain, sometimes a head injury, the results of a head injury can be seen much later on. So we want to address any type of hit to the head as soon as we can. So this is the, the information about how to get up from a fall. So these are really simple steps that can be taken to safely get up. And I believe these slides are going to be available for all the participants. So you can, you know, print this, this slide and have it available for older adults who you work with. So now I want to spend a few minutes before we move to the question and answer period talking about um, what we call evidence-based programs. And what this means is that there is research that shows that the program is effective in preventing falls. And the CDC and the Administration for Community Living, they have identified a number of evidence-based falls prevention programs that are intended to decrease falls and fall-related injuries as well as that fear of falling that I've mentioned several times. So we want to tell you, I want to tell you about some of these programs um, right now, but you know, really encourage you to find out where they're offered in your own communities, either for yourself or for the loved one who you're caring for. And we have um, a video on our website called You Have the Power to Prevent a Fall that provides information about these programs. We filmed this. Uh, video in North Carolina and in Maryland, and it includes interviews with older adults who are participants of some of these programs as well as those who lead the programs. And this, this picture right here um, is from a Tai Chi class, which um, is a common program used for false prevention, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment. So evidence-based programs, um, so this is another photo of, um, of Tai Chi, and Tai Chi consists of um, very simple, graceful movements that 
target improvements in balance, gait, flexibility, and muscle strength. And it's been practiced um, for hundreds of years um, in Asia and has been brought to the U.S. and many other countries. And Tai Chi has actually been shown to improve function for people with Parkinson's disease. It improves even some um, diabetes outcomes as well as heart disease. But there have been a number of studies looking at its positive impact on reducing falls and injury among older adults. And it's also been shown through a couple of research studies to improve cognitive function and along with that to, in, to reduce overall falls risk. So I'm not sure if any of you have tried Tai Chi, but it's a, it's a wonderful program. And I, I think there's going to be a lot more research kind of looking at the, the benefits of Tai Chi on improving cognitive function. One of the, um, the theories behind it is that there are, are a number of movements in Tai Chi, about 24 movements that, you know, over a course of time, people um, become very familiar with, those who practice it on a regular basis. Um, and it helps to slightly, you know, improve their memory and their cognitive function. Um, so the, the combination of the exercise with the brain stimulation has been very helpful. Uh, one program, um, this was first developed in Australia is called the Otago Exercise Program. And this program is led by a trained physical therapist. And it's delivered as part of an overall um, physical therapy program. But it's been shown to reduce falls by about 35%. And it includes a number of, of exercises that are individualized based on the particular person's um, needs. And it also consists of a walking program. So this is a, a wonderful program, particularly for older adults who are more frail and are homebound. This, this is a program that can be done right in the home. I've mentioned a matter of balance a couple of times. A matter of balance is a lay-led program, meaning that other older adults who have been trained in the program, they first have to participate participate in the program first to become a leader, um, but they get trained in, in leading others through the program. But it's an eight-week program, or I should say an eight-session program, two hours per session. Um, and it includes um, a lot of discussion among the participants on strategies for falls prevention, a lot of sharing of really great information. It includes an exercise component, um, as well as behavior modification. And that's really, I think, the, um, the secret sauce to this program. It helps people think very differently about their falls risks and helps them develop strategies to reduce those risks and kind of put them in control of their falls risk so they can get over that fear of falling. And what's nice about this program, too, is that the exercises can be done in a seated position or in a standing position. And as you can see um, from this photo, the participants in this program, even this man in a wheelchair, he, um, he's doing some of the, the exercises to improve his um, upper body strength. So again, this is um, a program that specifically addresses the fear of falling. And this program is offered, I believe, in like 44, 45 states and you can contact your local area agency on aging to find out where it's offered locally in your community. Um, Stepping On is um, a somewhat similar program. Um, this is a program for folks with a slightly higher maybe level of function, but still um, they might need some added confidence to reduce their falls risk. This is a seven-week program offered, um, the two-hour class program, again offered in places like senior centers, uh, area agencies on aging, it might be offered through a hospital department, um, even libraries might be offering this in conjunction with some of their community partners. And many of these programs can be work uh, can be used in coordination with one another. So maybe someone who has um, completed the Otago exercise program at home wants to join another program, something like Matter of Balance or Stepping On would be really great for them. And this program actually brings in 
some healthcare professionals from the community, like a pharmacist, to talk about medication as a risk factor for falls, as well as people from um, maybe the public works department to talk about community safety. So this is a, a wonderful program. Again, um, you can check with your area agency on aging to find out where, where that's located in your communities. And then Tai Chi is becoming more and more popular across the country. I've talked a little bit about it already. But it's a fantastic program for ongoing fitness and, and balance improvement. Um, so it's strictly a, an exercise program. There's typically not an educational component. So it may be a great program to um, refer someone to who's gone through a program like Matter of Balance or Tai Chi. And this program has been shown to reduce falls by as much as 50%. So it can have a, a significant impact on falls risk. And it needs to be practiced twice a week for about 24 weeks in order to realize that benefit. And Tai Chi is available in lots of places across the country. Parks and Rec departments are now offering it. YMCAs have really embraced it. They call it moving for better balance. Um, but it can also be offered at senior centers and other local organizations. So here's some tips on, on finding um, evidence-based programs in your local community. So I encourage you to, if you're interested in one of these programs, again, find out what's available close to you for yourself as well as um, someone you may be caring for. So moving on, the, this next slide provides um, information about a number of resources that we have available on the NCOA website. And you can download these free resources at this, um, this URL listed at the bottom. But I, I talked about the six steps to prevent a fall. It's an infographic that can be printed and disseminated to older adults. We have videos, we have brochures, we have information on the, the link between osteoporosis and osteoarthritis in falls. We have information on myths about falls. And then we also are in the process right now of developing, um, we're calling it a conversation guide. We're doing this in conjunction with the National Alliance for Caregiving. And it's how, it's tips on how care partners can start a conversation with an older adult about falls risk. And, and strategies they can use to, to reduce that risk. So that's going to be available with actually within the next couple of weeks, and I'd be happy to share that information with Molly so that she can disseminate it to all of you. And then finally, I wanted to share a little bit about National Falls Prevention Awareness Day, which, as I mentioned earlier, is today, the first day of fall. And the goal of this National Awareness day is to, as the name says, to really increase awareness about falls among older adults, but more importantly, on how falls can be prevented and how injuries can be prevented. And there are lots of activities taking place across the country today. Um, I'm really happy that I can do this webinar that's part of our, our Falls Prevention Awareness Day activities. In about an hour or so from now, I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live event that's a video with um, a colleague from the Fall Prevention Center of Excellence at the University of Southern California. And we're going to be talking about how to reduce falls or prevent falls while you're out and about in your community. Just you know, simple, simple strategies that we all need to think about when we are walking out and about. And uh, a lot of the activities around the country are spearheaded by falls prevention coalitions that are often based at um, state and local departments of health or departments on aging or area agencies on aging. And they provide things like professional education. They do physical activity events. I know in Iowa they're doing the largest Tai Chi demonstration. They're doing that at their state capitol to increase awareness among policymakers about the importance of false prevention. Um, there are a lot of public awareness activities um, it could be advertising, radio programs. Um, many of the coalitions are very creative in how they get the word out. Uh, many of them do falls risk screening or health fairs. And they 
they include maybe different stations on different risk factors. So they might do bring in an op, um, optometrist to do a, a vision screen or a pharmacist to review medications or a physical therapist to do some strength and balance testing. And many of the, the coalitions also use False Prevention Awareness Day as an opportunity to educate older adults about these evidence-based programs that I talked about. So if you want to learn more about False Prevention Awareness Day, the website is here um, on, on this slide. And as you can see, we have um, a picture of the ribbon that we're all wearing today to observe False Prevention Awareness Day. And the Falls Free is for our National Falls Free Initiative that includes about 40 national organizations that are committed to reducing falls among, among older adults. So here's some additional information if you want to learn more about the work we're doing in falls prevention as well as some of the work we do around access to benefits and Medicare. Um, feel free to check us out on our website. And I really want to thank you all for joining this webinar today. And Molly, I think we do have some yes. time to take some yes. questions. Yes, absolutely. So, thank happy. you. So yeah, thank you so much, Kathy. This has been fantastic. Um, and, and we're so happy to have you here with us today on such a big day for you on, on Falls Prevention Awareness Day. Uh, it's just been tremendous. So for those of you on the webinar right now, you've got an opportunity to go ahead and type in your questions. I see some questions that have already come in. Um, let me see here. Our first question is actually from Lauren, one of our social workers. Uh, here in New York, and she's asking uh, what your suggestions are in terms of go-to resources in the local community for modification to make the home safe, so keeping it, you know, fall safe. Yeah, that's a great question. Well, I would, first of all, I would start um, with connecting with occupational therapists, maybe find out where there's an occupational therapy association connect with them, find out who the occupational therapists are locally who have expertise in working with the geriatric population, find out those who might come into the home to do that, that falls risk assessment um, or just home assessment in general and who can make mod uh, recommendations for modifications to the home. So that's one place to start. Um, you want to find, you know, if you do have to make modifications to homes to make them safer, you want to find out who the local contractors and handymen are who are reliable, <laughs> um, who yeah. price their services fairly, um, who can do, do these modifications for older adults. Um, there are programs um, in different parts of the country. One is called Rebuilding Together. Uh, they have affiliates all across the country who help older adults, particularly um, low-income older adults, to, to make those home modifications so that older adults can age in place. Um, cool. I'd also connect with the area agencies on aging because some area agencies on aging actually have put in place programs where they have professionals who go out and do home assessments and make um, recommendations for uh, modifications. Excellent, so, thank you. And then a, um, a quick question kind of in addition to that is that is this ever covered by insurance? Is there any way that insurance can cover some of these modifications or adjustments, grab bars, things along those lines? Um, that's a really good question. Um, some insurance companies will pay for those types of things, um, even some long-term care insurance companies. You'd have to check with your individual policy to find out about that. There are some, um, if you have clients who are in Medicaid, there are some Medicaid waiver programs that will pay for, for home med uh, modifications. Um, some communities get community um, block grants to do these types of programs. Unfortunately, in the U.S., we don't have a really good, stable funding source for home modifications. It's kind of disparate funding out there, unfortunately. We are about, uh, later today, we're going to be posting a resource on our website that lists the variety of different funding sources that are available for home assessments and home modifications. And I can send that to you, Molly, so that you can send it out, send it out to folks. And I also want to mention some 
And wait, I'm sorry, Kathy. If people can, uh, if people can email you as well, I think your your email is on here. Is that correct? And so you can send it to them as well. Perfect. There you go. So folks, if you've got other um, requests, uh, Kathy is nice enough to go ahead and provide her that information. And certainly you can send it to us, and we'll have it listed for people. Okay. Um, Kathy, there's a few other questions if you don't mind. We've got a great question from uh, Amanda. I wonder if you could send some of the simple tips to prevent falls in the community as a handout or email. I won't be able to tune into the um, Facebook Live that's happening today, but would be interested in additional tips for my clients. Yeah, so I would start with the six steps to prevent a fall that's on our website. Right. So that's that. And that's info. also on the slide deck that's attached to the yes. webinar on the right-hand portal. So folks, remember there's a handout section and there are PDF versions of the slide deck that Kathy was nice enough to provide us today as well as some other information from AFA. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, definitely the six steps is a really good kind of basic um, resource that you can use and give to older adults. And I really, I think it's a great conversation starter too. Um, you know, to broach the topic of falls prevention. A lot of older adults don't want to talk about it because they feel if they do or if they mention they have a fall, they feel they may it may be the start to reducing their independence. Um, so we, we want to be very careful in, about the words we choose when we when we bring up a falls. But you know, it's all about safety and helping older adults remain as independent as possible. Excellent. And so we have another question. Uh, well, first of all, I'll compliment from Karina. Thank you so much. She says that this has been very insightful. Uh, we've got a question from Amy. Amy is asking about what do you think of wearing the pendant or bracelet from Lifeline? Do you think the reluctance to actually wear them renders them wasted money? Uh, and then she also asks, P.S., is there more elder-friendly alternatives? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think the uh, I think she's referring to the personal response. Um, yeah, device, personal uh -huh. response devices that older adults can wear. Um, again, they have to be um, presented to an older adult again as um, a way for them to stay as safe and independent as possible. Um, I've had the same issues with with my mother, mother-in-law, to get them to use them once we we purchase them, but. I think um, for particularly for people who live alone, it's really critical that they have something like this. And if they've already experienced a fall, we know that they're at higher risk for another fall. So I think you know, using those words and explaining it that way is really important. Um, some of the personal response devices now have um, what's known as an accelerometer in them where mm -hmm. Someone who is is falling, an alert actually goes off because many older adults who fall, they may become unconscious as a result of that fall, and they can't even press the button. But these accelerometers send an alert directly to the alert center, so the older person who has had a fall and and can't press the button, um, help can get to them. So I, I do think they're 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 worth um, they're worth the expense. They're for particular older adults, again, those who have a history of falls and those who live alone. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, a great question from Jonathan. What other exercise programs do you recommend other than Tai Chi? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, there is um, a program, um, again, these are community-based programs called, there are a number of them, um, something called Fit and Strong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is offered in a number of communities. That's a longer exercise program. It's particularly effective for people who have arthritis, who are at increased risk for falls. Um, there's another one called Enhanced Fitness. It's, again, a, a long-term program. And there's another one called SAIL. I'm blanking on exactly what that stands for. Um, it started in Washington State and is now being disseminated to different parts of the country, SAIL. Um, which is a, a great program. Also, I'd recommend, um, it has not yet been um, proven evidence-based, but if you're trying to get an older adult to just engage in more physical activity, the National Institutes on Aging have a program called Go for Life, 
And all of the materials can be downloaded from the, the NIA website, the National Institute for Aging website. And it's got some really great, again, simple exercises that older adults can do to improve their balance, their flexibility, their endurance, and their strength. Excellent. Great. We've got a few more questions uh, here. Thank you, everybody, so much for such wonderful questions. Pamela uh, is asking, it seems after a fall, the person appears disoriented and slow recovery for up to 24 hours. Can we assure that future falls, uh, can we assume, I'm sorry, can we assume that future falls will make the situation get worse? Hmm. Can, you, can you repeat the first part of the question? Oh, we'll yeah, it seems that after a fall, a person appears disoriented and there is a slow recovery for up to 24 hours. Can we assume that future falls will make this situation get worse? Um. I think that that really depends on the person and their underlying health conditions. Yeah. I think if they already have cognitive impairment, that might be definitely the case. Mm -hmm. But again, it depends on the, the seriousness of the injury um, and, yeah, other factors that are going on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we want to ensure, and, and we talk about this quite a bit here at AFA, is that we are looking at individuals as individuals and realizing that every single person is going to handle a, a fall just like they're going to handle an illness in a different way. And so to, to really monitor and recognize baseline and bring in the appropriate professionals. Thank Correct. you, Pamela. Uh, so we've got another question from Cheryl. As a private consultant working with seniors living with dementia, I enjoyed the false prevention webinar and what Kathy shared with us today. Excellent handouts and valuable information. Uh, tai Chi, for example, has been one of the ways I use to help seniors in their physical and cognitive therapies through recreational programs and nursing homes, adult day programs, Huge thanks to AFA for offering this webinar. Thanks, uh, thanks, Cheryl. We love having you here. Uh, Andrea has a great question saying, can home modifications be accomplished with a doctor's prescription? Uh, again, it really depends on the insurance that an individual has. Um, I think uh, a prescription for many insurance companies is required to get an occupational therapy um, occupational therapist to come into the home. So instead of paying out of pocket for their OT to come in, getting the referral, getting the, the prescription from the doctor can help, you know, pay for the services. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. Thank you. And uh, we've got one last question here. Many families are not aware that DME equipment can be ordered through insurance to assist with mobility. Are you able to elaborate on DME equipment and how to order and maybe examples of these devices that may be ordered? So DME stands for Durable Medical Equipment and includes a range of, of devices and assistive aids, you know, simple things like canes and walkers could be um, a bed rail for people who might um, have a fear of falling out of, out of the bed. Um, so yeah, many of these things can be ordered um, online. It's amazing the number of companies now that that do sell these products online. I guess my recommendation really is we got to make sure that these products are fitted appropriately to the individual, and that really takes a professional to to help identify what's most appropriate based on an individual need. You know, kind of Molly, what you were talking about um, just mm -hmm. a few minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they may. So they may be able to recommend a certain type of cane that can be purchased through an online site, but then we want to make sure that the individual knows how to use the cane or the walker or whatever whatever device it is to help with their with their stability. Great, thank you so much, Kathy. Do you mind just switching to the last slide here? Um, so just just so you guys know, uh, and again, Kathy, you're getting all sorts of thanks. This has been great, wonderful presentation, which which. For those of you who have colleagues who might not have been able to listen today, give us a day or two, and this will be listed on our website under the webinar, webinar archive with the rest of our Care Connection webinars. Um, we want to thank you, Kathy, and, and your team for coming and do, uh, doing this workshop with us today, this webinar, and for all of the great work that you do. Uh, just again, a few different reminders for folks. We do have another webinar coming up October 12th. We'd love to welcome you back then, where we'll be having a discussion on reverse mortgages. So please make sure you, uh, you stay tuned for that. For those of you who have gone through our AFA Dementia Care Partners training program, we want to uh, extend an opportunity for you to win our Dementia Care Professional of the Year 
uh, reward or award that's happening. The, the uh, deadline for those nominations is October 15th. So check out our website, www.alzfdn.org, and go ahead and nominate your favorite dementia care professionals today. Uh, AFA is uh, continuing its Educating America tour right now. We'll be in Long Island next week on the 26th, and then we'll be in Chicago, we'll be in Indianapolis, we'll be in Boston. So certainly check out our website and our events calendar to see uh, that we'll be coming to a city near you soon. Uh, additionally, for those of our friends here in New York City, please come by and see our new Education and Resource Center. We've got coffee talk on uh, professional networking workshops in the morning. We've got community classes for the seniors, including ballroom dance to help keep bodies strong and prevent falls. We've got music classes. We've got a class coming up on frauds and scams. And so those are free for the community members, so please make sure you bring them along. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call on our national toll-free helpline, 866-232-8484. Uh, our social workers are here for you. Thank you again so much, Kathy, for a great, great workshop today. Um, and we wish you all a fantastic weekend. Thank you. So much, Molly. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.